Hello and welcome to another video by Perfect Scores. This is Preetender Kaur and what we are doing is 11th grade biology. So, so far we have discussed uh, a lot of information about the animal kingdom's classification. We have covered four, uh, three phylums till now. Four in fact. In one of the videos you might have gone through phy phy uh, phylum porifera. And then in the previous video you should have done three phylums. That is phylum celenterata. Phylum Tinophora and Phylum Platyhelminthes. So we are going to begin with the fourth phylum right now, the fifth one in fact, that is Phylum Eschelminthes. A common example of which is the roundworm. That is also known as Ascaris. So let's get started with what are the features of this phylum Aschelminthes. But before that, don't forget to uh, go ahead and visit our page perfect-scores.com to watch more such videos. And please don't forget to share and like our page at Facebook. And if you have any suggestions or feedback, you can give it at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. So the basic uh, thing that you need to know about this phylum is that their body is usually circular in a cross section. So let me write that down. That's why the name given to them is known as round worms. So they are commonly known as round worms. They can be free living as well. It can be aquatic also. It can be terrestrial. It can be parasitic. So all of them, uh, these varieties are available. They have an organ system level of organization. So not just organs, but organ system level of organization. They are bilaterally symmetrical. That means their body can be divided into two halves only on one axis or in one plane only. Bilaterally symmetrical. They are triploblastic and they have a false coelom that makes them pseudo coelomates. Additionally, they have an elementary canal that is meant for intake of nutrition. And this elementary canal also have a muscular pharynx. So that is one step ahead of the previous phylum, which was Platyhelminthes. A muscular pharynx makes its appearance first in this phylum. There is an excretory tube as well that helps to remove the body wastes from the body cavity. This is through excretory pores. They don't have any special organ systems for excretion, but excretory pores are present. Sexes are separate, that means it is dioecious, not hermaphroditic. And males and females are distinct and usually the females are longer than the males. So that is one piece of information that can help you differentiate. Fertilization is internal. And development can be direct or indirect both. In direct development, the young one looks exactly like the adult. In indirect, there may be intermediate stages. So it's a very simple uh, organism, just looks like this. And it can form itself into circles or uh, looks like a round figure. Some examples are the common roundworm, which is also known as Ascaris. Apart from that, the hookworm which is scientifically known as encyclostoma, encylostoma. And the filaria worm, that is scientifically known as vituraria. So let's revise the features of phylum Aschelminthes. They're circular in cross-section and they're commonly known as round worms. Because of that, they are bilaterally symmetrical. And the level of organization is at an organ system level. 
They are triploblastic with a false coelom, so pseudocoelomates. They have an elementary canal with a muscular pharynx as well. The excretion is done through an excretory tube that removes all the wastes outside through these pores. Is the, it is also dioecious, that means the sexes are separate, usually the females being longer in length than the males. Fertilization is internal and development can be direct and indirect both. If it is direct, the young ones will resemble the adult ones. So that was about Astralminthes and the next phylum that we have to do is phylum Annelida. So let me write that down. Just like the previous phylum, uh, the organisms of this phylum as well can live in a variety of conditions. It can be aquatic, both marine and freshwater, or terrestrial, or free living, or even parasitic. They have an organ system level of organization. And the most common example of Annelida is the common earthworm. They have bilateral symmetry. That means you can divide them into two symmetrical halves only on one plane. Additionally, they are triploblastic. And they exhibit metamerism. That means their body is divided into segments. Each segment is internally consistent with all the other segments, with usually the other segments, most of them. And they have a true coelom, so they are easily known as coelomates. The body surface is easily marked into segments, and that is why the phylum is known as Annelida. Because in the language Latin, annulus means a little ring. So these annelids, they have rings on them. And they also have some kind of specialized muscles that are longitudinal, longitudinal as well as circular muscles that help in shifting the body forward and thus helping in locomotion. So that is one extra feature. There are some aquatic annelids like Neris. So that is a special case that I'm taking an example. It is aquatic. And it has some kind of uh, lateral appendages called parapodia that help in swimming. Because it's an aquatic analyte. There is also a closed circulatory system in them. So that means blood does not flow openly, it flows in the form of vessels. Additionally, Osmoregulation and excretion are taken care of by nephridia, equivalent of uh, kidneys in us in human beings. Nephridia, they help in osmoregulation and in excretion as well. The neural system consists of ganglia, paired ganglia. Singular, it's known as a ganglion. That means two of them are present in each segment. And they are connected by lateral nerves to a central nerve cord that is known as a double ventral nerve cord. Now coming back to Neris, which is an example, it is dioecious, that means that the sexes are separate. So the spellings here are D-I-O-E-C-I-O-U-S. Earthworms and leeches, on the other hand, are monoecious. That means the separate sexes are present. Reproduction is sexual in that case. So let's go over once again what all is present in this phylum. The phylum gets its name from the Latin word annulus that means rings. So they have an organ system level of organization with bilateral symmetry. They're triploblastic. 
and they exhibit metamerism, which is that their body is divided into rings or segments. They are coelomates. That means that they have a proper body cavity. Additionally, they have longitudinal and circular muscles that help to contract and expand and help uh, the organisms to move ahead. The circulatory system is closed and the liquids that flow in the form of vessels. Nephridia are present for osmoregulation and excretion. The neural system is composed of paired ganglia where each pair is there in one segment and there are lateral nerves that connect the ganglia to the double ventral nerve cord. Uh, two examples that we took on. The first one is neuris which is aquatic and it has uh, extra appendages called parapodia that help it in swimming and it is dioecious that means the sexes are not separate. So this organism would look some like, somewhat like this. So these will be the different segments and there will be appendages that will help it in swimming. But in case of earthworms and leeches, the body is simply like this. There are no appendages because uh, they are not aquatic and they are monoecious. That means the separate uh, sexes are there and that is why the reproduction is sexual. So we've already done example of neris and uh, blood leech. The common name of earthworm, the scientific name of earthworm, that is Ferretima. And the common name of the blood leech, that is Hirudinaria. So that was all about phylum Annelida. So let's move on to the next phylum that we have to do, that is phylum Arthropoda. And remember, don't forget it, this is the largest phylum of the entire kingdom Animalia, phylum Arthropoda. And this contains maximum number of animals and it is also that phylum that contains insects. About over two-thirds of all named species existing on the earth are arthropods. So that's a pretty big phylum. So some of the features are that it has organ system level of organization. Organ system level of organization. As you might be remembering from that division chart that we did in the beginning, how the different phylums are separated, they are also bilaterally symmetrical. So bilateral symmetry is present in them. They are triploblastic. They have a true coelom, so they are coelomates. And they are also segmented into different segments. Not just like annelids, so many segments, but exactly about three segments. Now, one thing that their body is covered by a chitinous exoskeleton. That means an exoskeleton made of the substance chitin is present in them. Additionally, the body is divided into three parts. The uppermost part is called the head. The middle part is called the thorax. And the last part is called an abdomen. They also have appendages that are joint jointed appendages that's how they get their names appendages means poda and joints means arthro so that's how they get their name jointed appendages arthropoda for respiration they have gills or they can also have book gills they can have book lungs and they can also have a tracheal system depending on the subdivisions but right now we're just doing the basics of all the phylum so you should know that respiratory organs can be any one of these coming to the circulatory system it is an open type that means there are no blood vessels coming to the sensory system the special organs are present, for example, antennae, like on the head of a cockroach, eyes. Eyes can be both simple as well as compound. Additionally, balance organs, 
especially for those uh, animals, especially for those insects that have to fly. And statocytes, that is the other name of the balance organs. Excretion that takes place through specialized tubules, those are known as the malfigine tubules. Additionally, these are dioecious, that means the sexes are not separate. Fertilization is internal. These organisms are usually oviparous, that means they lay eggs. They do not give birth to live offspring. Development can be both direct. as well as indirect. Some examples are the honeybee, which is known as apis. So let me use a different color for the examples. So apis, that is the honeybee. Another example is the bombyx, which is the silkworm. That is economically important to us. Then lacifer or lacifer which is the lac insect. Additionally, there are many vectors that can cause diseases. For example, um, Anopheles, Culex, Aedes. These are all examples of mosquitoes. And one more thing, there is also another example that is known as a living fossil. That is the king crab. The scientific name for that is Limulus. In fact, even locusts, which is just simply known as locusta, that is also part of this very phylum. That's a very destructive insect. So let's quickly revise what all is there in Arthropoda. Uh, the important thing is that they all have an exoskeleton made up of chitin and the body is composed into three parts, the head, the thorax, the abdomen. The level of organization is organ system. They have bilateral symmetry. They are triploblastic. They have segments and they have a true body cavity. That is why they are coelomates. They have jointed appendages. That is why they are called arthropods. Respiration can be through gills, book gills, book lungs or the tracheal system. Circulation is open type. Sensory organs can be antennae or eyes, both simple or compound. Balance organs or statocytes. Excretion is through malfigin tubules. They are dioecious, that means sexes are not separate. Internal fertilization takes place. They are oviparous, give uh, eggs and do not give birth to live offspring. Additionally, the development can be both indirect and direct. And we also did a few examples, especially of the living fossil that is the king crab, Limulus. And useful ones, useful arthropods are Apis, which is honeybee, Bombyx, which is a silkworm, and Lacifer, which is lac insect. And some harmful ones are Locusta for locust, Anopheles, Culex and Aedes which are examples of mosquitoes that cause diseases such as malaria and dengue. So that is all in Arthropoda. And in this particular video we have covered three basic phylum that is phylum Eschelminthes and then we talked about phylum Annelida and finally phylum Arthropoda. So I hope this video was useful and if you want to share any feedback, you can do it at perfectscores89 at gmail.com. And don't forget to watch all the other videos on the animal and plant kingdom classification as well. Thank you so much for watching this.